Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, Why People Will Not Just Leave an Abusive Relationship Connection. Okay? They're not going to just leave. We could sit down and talk their ears off. And if they don't have the motivation they're not going to do it if they don't have the plan if they don't have the finances if they don't even have a spiritual compass how in the world are they going to just leave so i don't want anybody to take any of these audio messages and say oh i detect that there's something in this message where i'm supposed to just leave well i can't do that that's why some of the messages are as long as they are Because when we're dealing with the oppressed, when we're dealing with those individuals who are held captive, whether physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, sexually, or even those who are spiritually blind, we know that they're not going to just walk with the one true God or just leave a situation or just, you know, do whatever it is that the audio message is asking. It is a process. I didn't just come to talking about these sorts of issues, family, relationship, business, and spirituality on this channel. It was a process. I didn't just leave a relationship years ago that was abusive. It was a process to get there. The church wanted me to just leave, okay? When they detected there was something spiritually wrong with the individual that I was with, he hadn't said anything or did anything in the church. Neither had I told anybody about what was going on behind the closed door, behind closed doors. But there were those, though, who picked up on something and wanted me to just leave. And so they would say things like, you know, God doesn't want you shacking up. You know, uh, God wouldn't be pleased. You know, they that's the angle that they took. But I wasn't close enough to God to even go there with the whole I just want to impress and love on the Lord and do the right thing. And, you know, all of this other thing, other, um, you know, things that go in your mind at that time. No, mm -mm, I wasn't there yet. So you're telling people for some of you all, not all, but some of you all are telling people to just do something and they don't even have the tips, the steps or anything. One thing, which isn't, so serious as what I'm talking about. But just to give you an example, you get some of these YouTubers who will tell you something about how you can improve your channel, how you can make it this and make it that. And then they got their little blueprint. We see the same thing over and over again. Okay. I'm not interested in a business model, but you know, thanks. But the thing is, is that when you see that someone is suffering or somebody is, you know, falling short of a goal or, you know, you think that they could be better or the system, the process could, you know, be better. Adjust anything is not going to do it. Especially if you're not willing to continue to help them, whether it's through videos, audios, you know, one-on-one calls, classes, whatever. A lot of times the just, just do this and just do that is a person who's either fed up, a person who's simply lazy, okay? A person who is self-righteous or narcissistic, conceited. I think I'm better than everybody else. So why don't you just, you see what I mean? I had individuals when I was going through all sorts of challenges in my life, there was always, for whatever reason, somebody among Job's friends, (laughs) If you're familiar with the scriptures, you know what I'm talking about, who you did this, you do that, you did that. And this is why you're going through. And why don't you just, mm, and some of those people are not in my life any longer. Okay. God has a way of dealing with some people. Just if it was so easy, so simple, if my mind was even right in order to fix a situation, don't you think I would have, don't you think I would have just ran out the door? But evidently there was something wrong in the mind. Come on, somebody, that's your truth. I don't know exactly what it is this person says, but I know, yes, my situation is wrong for me. I know that I should be doing something about it, but it's not a just leave type of thing. (laughs) Okay, it's highly complicated. 
there was someone who her emotions and even to this day is so wrapped up into an individual with an addictive personality okay without getting too specific um but yeah there's some addiction going on there and initially there was the conversation that we had about the just but then as we listened come on to one another and we were the type of individuals that had compassion and care and cried at times okay you know what this is not a just so we need to handle each other with care there shouldn't be no attitudes mood swings you think you know you better you ought to you should and all that let's be nicer more respectful kinder and we don't want to get into arguments and so there comes a point when you've already had all those conversations that you you are and i know it's tough for parents grandparents you know favorites it's tough to say I've got to go. It's, it's over. I can't keep doing this with you. You know, you'll figure it out. I trust that the Lord is going to see you through that. You're going to have the resources, the friendships, all of that good stuff. I am just outpouring nothing but positivity and prayer and everything that's good, righteous, and true for you. Okay. That's it. And this is where we have to leave it with some individuals. I would even say that if it's getting to a point where it's very frustrating trying to sit through some of these messages, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> we had a great journey. I'm glad I could be of some assistance. Now it's time for you to figure it out. Okay? Because I don't need you to be fighting back and forth about this, that, and the other with different people. I don't want you to be looking at me like, oh, you know, <laughs> She's just because we know that it's not a just with me. It's a just with you in trying to get justice when it comes to that abuser who's using and abusing. Okay. Cause that's what I'm ultimately after. I'm not really after so much to just leave. I really want you for some of you all to be able to sit there front row seat and see what God's going to do. Okay. I remember someone or some, some bot or whatever had flagged a message that I had years ago about vengeance, but you know what? That's God. That's God. That's exhibiting, showing himself strong. That's his vengeance. You know, some people, they misconstrue things and they'll say manipulations and witchcraft and, you know, all sorts of other things. No, I can't control what God is going to do to an abuser because of what he did to a victim. Come on. Sometimes that's why God's not letting some people out of situations because he wants you to be able to one day sit with your popcorn and watch the movie. And this time you're not going to be the lead character in that drama, thriller, horror, suspense. Oh no. Instead, it's going to be somebody else. And justice is going to show up and deal with that person. I know sometimes we try to, you know, keep from bad things happening, you know, like we'll stand in front, you know, of a person in the spiritual realm and say, Lord, please, please don't touch them. Don't touch them. Lord said, get out the way or else. No, I'm good. I'm gonna move out the way. <laughs> yeah. Cause I do recall, I did pray about some things and I did observe some things about this individual. I don't even know what came over me, Lord. You know, <laughs> I, I need to get out the way. You see, it's like that parent back in the day. I'm coming after your brother. I'm coming after your sister. Okay. I'm coming. I'm coming where you are. I need you though to move out the way, but, but no, 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 no. Do you want what's coming to them? No. Okay. You've been good up to this point. Okay. Got good grades. You're doing the right thing. You're not the one that we're focusing on, even though typically we are, but this time around, it's not about you move out the way. Cause I'm dealing with your sister or your brother. You see? And so that's what they do. That's what you have done. Okay. But it comes to now the thing is with God, his justice is righteous. It's on point. But with humans, sometimes it was wrong. It was straight up wrong. You know, the parent made the wrong decision. The parent said the wrong thing. We got parents who are dealing with sons and daughters, grown sons and daughters and saying the wrong thing. Okay. You didn't pray before you opened up your mouth. You didn't ask the Lord for resources in terms of helping. 
You know, we could just say and do the types of things that can scar our children mentally, physically, spiritually for the rest of their lives. And we don't want that sort of thing. That's why we got to get God in on whatever it is that they're dealing with, whatever they're going to end up bringing to us. I could feel something in the spirit with my own as I'm speaking. Jesus, he shunned up a wolf. This been this sort of thing happens for years while I'm preaching a message. Then suddenly it's like I kind of stumble over words or I stop. You know, because it, it's it's something in the atmosphere. Sometimes I'll see things with regard to my listeners and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm feeling some things like right now. I'm feeling some things. It's coming very quickly. So I got to stay on point, but I also got to deliver the word as the Lord gives me, even if it is sometimes off point. And that's what happens sometimes in some of these audios. Woo, Lord Jesus. All right, let's get centered. The just leave too many people. Oh, here we go again with the just leave, just leave. Mm -hmm. And when have you left a situation? What, what do you mean? Well, you know, when, when have you decided to put in your notice? What notice? Oh, you didn't know God. He spoke. He showed you in so many ways about your job. Oh no, I don't plan on doing anything with that. Hmm. Okay, well, you did hear through the grapevine they're laying people off. Well, yes. And this is a real thing. I had a dream years ago. It was a Fortune 500 company. And some of you all, you're familiar with the story. If you <laughs> have been with me from way back when, um, when this channel was started, somewhere around 2011, 12, I may have given this story. But anyway, um, the layoff situation, though, had happened as far back as 1993, though, that story. Now, the thing was, was that I got a dream back then about some things that were taking place. OK, and God, he also will use people to confirm some things as well. OK. And I went into the workplace. And I started talking to those who I was closest to, who I really cared about and so forth. And the other people, I, I didn't have no rapport with them. They were just working just like I was and they barely spoke to me. But the ones who I had a rapport with, I went and I said, look, I know that you guys are going to find this kind of strange. And they're looking at me like, well, you spiritual, <laughs> you know, because I was I was on my way, wasn't sold out, you know, but was on my way. Actually, it was in 1993. It was 1997. Yeah, 1997. So meanwhile, these individuals, they were like, well, what, what's going on? And I said, I had a dream and I dreamt that everybody received pink slips. Really? Mm -hmm. And I saw where there were people that were upset about this sort of thing. Um, but for whatever reason, it didn't, it, it, you know, it didn't impact me. It was like in the dream, I knew I had to go. So I'm letting you guys know that there's something that's going to happen very soon. And I need for you, you know, to start looking for a job. You know, I don't, I don't want to see you guys end up, you know, not having a job. And they said, how you know this? And I said, God, I mean, it was a dream I had. Lo and behold, the, um, the manager, he called us into a meeting literally weeks after I told, like maybe two weeks. And, um, after I told these folks and they looked at me and their mouths dropped and their eyes were wide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh, girl. I don't know what you got, but woo. I said, mm hmm. I said, well, you don't have me to worry about because um, I'm not sticking around here. You know, one of the guys he called me and he was concerned and he says that well, we got an opportunity in Seattle. I said, mm -mm, right away. I said, God didn't call me to Seattle. I said that God called me to stay right where I'm at. You know, and not with this company, but right in the same city. You know. He said, oh, well, I'm just, you know, letting you know, giving you an opportunity. You know, I could pull some strings, make some things happen. I said, no, I'm good. I said that I'll get some resumes out. We'll see what happens. And I swear, literally within days of talking to him, I was like, okay, just want to let you know that I got to go. I would like to give you a full two weeks notice, but mm, is it possible if I could leave a little bit early, you know? And he was like, good. yeah, you're, you're good. And he went on and he let me go. Um, ended up getting at that particular time an administrative assistant role had went from a data entry clerk to uh, an administrative assistant for um, at that particular time in my life it was University of Pittsburgh Medical Center at Presbyterian Hospital 
Oh, yes. I was excited. You're talking about full benefits and all that good stuff. And a lot more money than what I was making. Now, I want you to understand some things. When you have a situation where it is a just leave and it's coming directly from the one true God, you don't stick around to see what's going to happen. Anybody who stuck around to see what was going to happen, those individuals ended up getting unemployment pay. Okay, but we already know unemployment pay, please, wasn't much. Um, but they weren't ready, I guess, to start looking for jobs and want to take a break. I get that too. Some people just didn't have the opportunity. All right. I needed God like yesterday because at that particular time in my life, I had to pay my own bills. Okay. And I was living by myself. Some of you all know how that goes. So if you don't have an income coming in and there's nobody around to help you, to support you, you know, <laughs> It's all you. So the Lord, though, you get God in on these things. And, hey, I'm telling you, good things are happening. Speaking of with the whole just leave business, we are going to see even in this circle. And some of you all, you're going to even read in comments every now and again where people are going to leave. They're going to leave relationships. And I'm excited about it because it's been too many years for some individuals. See, some of you all, you just showed up. Right. You're fresh. And I appreciate you subscribing and all that good stuff. But um, likes, you know, comments, all that. But we got some individuals that have been riding for years and God's been speaking to them time and time again. There's some part of the message where they get this revelation, they get this confirmation, they know what they're supposed to do. And they they've been inching closer and closer to what they need to do. Some of them are going to be leaving bad uh, partnerships. We're talking about same sex relationships and they're going to be by themselves. Finally, after all this time. Okay. We got some individuals in the circle. I'm seeing this in the spiritual realm. So I'm not specifically calling anyone out, nor has anyone reached out to me at the time of this audio message. We also got individuals in relationships where it is hetero and they're ready to go. Okay, had enough. There's been some cheating, some lying, some stealing even, and some creeping going on. They're getting ready to go. We got some ministers who's stepping down. They're going to leave the church, but they're not leaving to be heathens or being wild men and wild women. I see more men in the spirit than women, but they're leaving because they just want that personal relationship with the one true God, where it's not on full blast, where they don't have to teach and preach and do all those things because, hey, they want to retire just like everybody else. OK, and so that's happening locally for some of you all. You're going to hear about it um, and then you're going to find out that the son is taking over the church in some cases in this very few cases. But there is going to be a female in a lead role and it's going to be temporary, though. God does that to sound the alarm on the church to let the church know that you don't have any men that's equipped for leadership. Mm, Lord Jesus. Yeah, there was a reason why certain parts of the scriptures were taken out of the Bible many, many years ago. And some will never be put back into the Bible. Okay, but in, that's a whole nother subject. But some of you all know that there are 88, what is it, 81 um, scriptures or 81 um, books um, in the older Bibles, ancient Bibles. Um, as opposed to nowadays with the 60, you know, with the 66, and then they keep switching and changing and messing around with the scriptures um, to fit whatever the agenda is. So lots of stuff, lots of stuff going on. Um, but that's digressing. And I told you that's how it is sometimes. Um, just leave. So we got individuals that's also leaving workplaces. Hallelujah. And they've been riding with me for oh my goodness since the beginning of this channel and they know who they are finally you're going to give up the workplaces that are just no longer serving you some folks they've been holding out because of retirement they want their monies but i heard through the grapevine about these pensions okay and all of the foolishness associated with pensions so people you know sticking it out i get it but then there are others who they found some disappointing news when it came down to uh, their um, 401ks and all of that. It's, it's sad. I mean, you know, how some of these companies rip people off. 
you know, but I know that God, he's going to be dealing with some of these companies. Matter of fact, that's why, um, they are closing and that's why some of them have to do massive layoffs. You see, you're losing money. You're not gaining money. You see, when you're sitting up there and you as a business owner, not most of you all, but those that are business owners, when you sit up there and you're making decisions that are impacting the people who put you on the map and they're the type of decisions that you know that you could have done something else in order to make some money, but you chose to mess around with people's jobs, their livelihoods and everything else. Oh, you reap what you've sown, you see. And that's why it doesn't pay for some individuals to even take a position where you are responsible for getting rid of people's jobs. Because there is this interesting thing, and I know just from observing some things personally and over the years professionally there's this interesting thing that happens even though you did the right thing you know you appeased your masters and you know you you took care of your managers you, you know and whatever else they told you but there is still this business out there of righteous indignation you know and it the, the believers who've been impacted they cry, they plead, they go to the one true God. And uh, yeah, these negative things tend to happen to the ones who deliver the, the, uh, the information. But it's a humbling experience because it's like, wow, you got rid of that person's job and now they turn around and they get rid of yours. And there's nothing to be conceited about that. Mm-hmm. You see, you know, well, they took my job too. Uh-huh. You see, they better have if you get some of those. Well, <sighs> Lord Jesus. So the just leave, you know, it's it's not even an option right now. It's a mandate for some individuals. They're hearing it loud in the in the spiritual realm. They're seeing the signs, the visions, the wonders, the dreams. People that don't even know them all like that is telling them it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to leave. But the plan has to be put in motion, Lord Jesus. And some of you all, if the plan's not in motion, guess what? You're not going to be going anywhere. I get it. There was one particular diagram that I came across which said if unhealthy relationship, for instance, you know, with the intimate relationships, if unhealthy relationship behavior has become normal, you may not understand that the relationship is abusive. So if somebody starts cussing and fussing, right, initially, okay, this is not going to fly. But if they keep doing it over and over and over again, after a while, it, it becomes normal. It becomes, uh, it's okay, it's all right. And I remember feeling that way at one particular workplace. And the Lord said, remember, remember how you felt when it first happened? I said, yes. He said, you are not to remain in this environment. Oh, oh, okay. So you're giving me the green light. Yeah, well, if you're giving me the green light, then there must be something right around the corner, which there was. But then that particular situation was crazy. And I was like, well, Lord, why am I even here? And he said that because there are some things that you're going to experience. And when you experience them, hallelujah, you're going to be able to direct some people, guide them most appropriately when it's time to speak those messages with regard to the workplace. You can't do it sitting in the comfort of your home. Oh, Lord Jesus. But you can do it as I lead. And so there was a series of events that took place where I was out there just like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> Right there in the traffic, right there in the workplaces, right there where breath is smelling and people are sickly and trying to hide that they're sick. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was some things going on. There was some sipping the tea. And we're not talking about sipping like liquid tea, but sipping gossip tea that was going on. There was people that was lying. There was people that was doing some shady things, stealing from the companies and carrying on. I said, it's a hot mess. I don't know where I've been, Lord Jesus. <laughs> You've been shielding me because I feel like I've been just dropped into something new. I mean, my stomach would hurt. My head would hurt. I didn't even want to go back into some of these atmospheres. I'm like, is, is the case study done yet, Lord? <laughs> Did I get enough notes about the situation so I can exit? <laughs> Lord Jesus, there's a lot. There's a lot out there. So if you who, oh, Lord, could you please make a way for me to get into certain environments? You better be careful what you pray for. How about you be more specific as to where you want to be? <laughs> Lord, help us. 
All right. This same little diagram is called reasons why people um, in abusive relationships can't just leave. Um, it says there's social pressure to be in a perfect relationship. Hmm. There's incredible pressure to be uh, in this perfect relationship and some cultures and social media only accentuate this pressure. Mm. So we got these individuals who there's social pressure to stay in that abusive relationship in celebrity world. They know that all too well. I'm not about to break up because then everybody is going to ask me questions. I'm going to be harassed. I'll just deal with this man. I know he's weird. I know he's got strange things that he does. I know that he's got obsessions and, uh, and connections that I don't agree with. I know he's got women out there, but I'm just going to stick it out because mm, mm, mm. some people is about timing. It's not a good idea to be breaking up right now. You know, the church, uh oh, the church is expecting us to do A, B, and C. Can you just hold off on that divorce until after? Oh, it's not a good idea right now. You know, the kids are just going through a lot. Um, you know, we can just have the type of relationship where, you know, we're friendly with one another. The kids don't have to know, though, that we're no longer married. Mm, that's somebody's secret. Then we got some individuals who, okay, I want to lead this abusive relationship. These drugs have fried this woman's brain. I don't quite know how I'm going to go about doing it right now because then she might put some business out in the street from back when I was on drugs and what I did to her and I'm not ready for that. So I got to figure some things out. I get that. I mean, see, I'm just seeing and feeling some things in the spiritual realm. We got some individuals who over a lifetime, you've acquired so much wealth, Lord, Lord Jesus. And so when you did, acquire all of this wealth and it was a lot you also knew that you had to safeguard that wealth but then you got a little shall we say generous okay and you did some things with this wealth and it's connected to somebody who you no longer want to be a part of in the spiritual realm, it's it's really complex. <laughs> I mean, there's there's some words for this sort of arrangement, and it's not a re, it's not so much a intimate relationship or anything like that. It's some kind of partnership of some sort. So you've got to be mindful of the timing, but it is abusive because of the communication. I see that clear, bold. Um, it is abusive because of the communication with this partner, investor, civic group brotherhood something or not another that's the part where i'm just it's clouded um but yeah the, whatever this arrangement is yeah you gotta be real careful i'm seeing that in the spiritual realm and you do want to get attorneys involved because this isn't something that this person whoever he or she is to you is going to take lightly when it happens okay i understand that there's various types of people who tune in hmm so that explains too why sometimes I'm very guarded. It's almost like I don't I don't know something comes over me and I'm very guarded about what I say, but it's enough information for certain entities um to know to be able to come up with the plans in order to do what they need to do. Speaking of mainstream, the greater good, the larger society, right? Those that run some things behind the scenes. One of the things that happens in these very complex organizations is these conversations that lead to nowhere and progress doesn't move forward. Instead, there's a lot of money being wasted and a lot of time being wasted. So in the spiritual realm, what God does is, is that he raises up something like a voice, you know, like a Jiminy Cricket type of character, right? For Pinocchio. So Pinocchio is not saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled, doesn't even really care about God, but cares about wisdom. Okay. So, but Jiminy is spiritual and wise and what have you. Okay. So this individual who shows up in the establishment, their job is to keep some folks level headed from a spiritual perspective. So to cancel them out or to say that, you know, their words, uh, you don't really like to 
listen to them or, well, what if they're wrong about this? What about that? That sort of thing. That's so relevant because if you're with someone that God or he, or they've been guided in your direction, or you've been guided in their direction, if God is in a plan, it's not about what if they're wrong. Okay. It looks like it sometimes when the seer speaks, when the prophet or prophetess speaks, it looks wrong. Sometimes I know I have personally given messages where privately where individuals, Oh, this doesn't even sound right. This doesn't even make any sense. I'm not even sure what I'm listening to right now, but then it eventually makes sense. You see, I ask, what does this mean to you? What does that mean to you? Oh, well, this is this and this is that. Okay, now here's the pieces of the puzzle. This is what we need to do in order to accomplish. This is not a situation where you can just pack up, run out the door or just sign off on a document and everything's going to be just peachy. Okay, especially when we're talking about societal matters where there are people who sign legal documents. You can't just leave. (laughs) All right. Okay. Um, you know, you got some individuals who, okay, we got to get paid. If you want to be released out of this contract, we got to get our money. Right. So those individuals are out there and they're just waiting. They're waiting for you to do the wrong thing. They're waiting for you to press the wrong button. They're waiting for you to make the wrong, um, partnership, wrong financial decision, wrong anything. And you know, it's sad when friends become foes because this is why they're waiting. I'm seeing in the spiritual realm for some individuals, they're waiting for you to hang yourself, for you to mess up so that they can come back and they can go ahead and do some things in order to make your life difficult. We don't give the enemy any type of moves, strategies or whatever. It goes back to what old school said. Don't let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Hallelujah. Yes, God is good, isn't he? You know, scriptures can only provide but so much. And as I've said in other audio years ago, you got some scriptures that God, he will bring you to some, but he himself knows how his word has been tampered with. So that's why, you know, there's the in and out of scriptures for some individuals when it comes to getting some type of insight. But then those who are enlightened about a number of issues related to the Bible, in addition to, you know, just religions of all, um, they know that something's missing here. Something's not making any sense. I'm going to have to talk to someone, you know, like once again, Jiminy Cricket to fill in the blanks. Okay. Because you see where this contradicts. And do you see when you cross reference and you look at this and that, you know, and then they'll pull out certain words and I get all of that. That's why I say, can we just, let's, let's not argue over scripture. Let's not, you know, nitpick and, and, you know, go back and forth over some things. Let's get centered. Let's, let's, you know, do some deep breathing. (laughs) Let's relax. Let's get our heart rates down. Let's make sure that we don't have the type of things in the atmosphere that is drawing all sorts of negativity, raising um, up all sorts of energy that is not of the Lord. We got to get it together, you see, and then God, he will then provide a way of escape. Hallelujah. He will provide an exit plan. Sometimes these sorts of things take hours and hours and hours. I remember one particular session when I was out there trying to figure out some things myself, the Lord used um, mothers as well as fathers of the church to sit and tarry with me. And it was um, seeking just insight on what's the next chapter. What do I need to do? All of that. And I was like scatterbrained at the time and, and, you know, dealing with all sorts of personality stuff that was coming out, which um, some of you all would just simply put demons. Okay. Um, All of this stuff was going on. And at least with that particular uh, church, even though they felt in the spiritual realm that I needed to just leave, they also recognized too, though, that there had to be some cutting away and cutting off before any of the just leave could take place. You see, it's spiritual work. I'm hearing that in the spiritual realm for someone. It's spiritual work that needs to take place before you can go talking about, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Because all you find yourself doing is going back to the problem again. You know, you go back to doing the same old, same old again. Some people do this with work. We can clearly see that, you know, they keep going back to the same old industry that they already said. Didn't you say you didn't want that industry? You know, didn't you say you didn't want to even be a part of it? You didn't want to work for them. You can't stand those people. Well, how come you keep going back? You see, and some people, they do this with relationships. 
you see. So we want some folks to leave and leave for good this time. So let's make sure that spiritual house is in order. Check, listening to messages, feeling free, praying, fasting, reading your word. Great. Let's make sure that physically you're capable of handling the move. Oh, you're not. Okay. Then you know that you need to get out there and make some money or you need to stop spending so much. So cut back on certain things that you're paying for so that you can have some money to be able to move. Right. You know, we, we, there's lots of plans and things that need to be put into motion before. Once again, we scream from the rooftops, just leave. (laughs) Oh Lord Jesus. But I understand that for some of you all, you know, you're around these types of influences that they're in your ear telling you that if you leave, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know, well, once we just, you know, we dispel all of the myths, especially for abusers, it's nothing more than last. They'll figure it out with somebody else. And that's another thing that keeps some people from leaving is I don't want them to figure it out with anybody else. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll keep on being abused. And now that I don't have any conversation for. Because if you choose to stay with an individual and your life is at risk, your children's lives are at risk, I got nothing else to say. Because I told one particular relative, I said, you get me involved, police will be at your door. You're not ready for that, huh? Okay, then let's not, let's not reach out to me then. (laughs) <laughs> you know, um, or, or one particular individual, she said something, um, years ago about a book that she wanted to check out. It was, um, my socially sweet, privately cruel, abusive men. And, um, I'm like, okay, you ready to rock? You ready to go? This type of thing. And then weeks later she was murdered. Okay. Now that gives some folks a little shake up. A little, you know, cold chills going down the spine. And she was murdered because she waited too late. Okay? She waited too late. By the time you get to a place where you start looking for my books, you might be already having the enemy breathing down your neck. You understand where I'm coming from? That's why I want you to move out of situations safely. You see, safely. Now, she wasn't ready to leave at the time when the murder took place. There you have it. Okay? And then when conversations since then with individuals above ground took place, they tried to dismiss, even though the woman was gone. And so was the person who did it to her was gone, still tried to make excuses as to why things went the way they went. See, some of us, we know more about stories than other people know. So I just let people just say whatever they gonna say. Because here's the problem, is that when you do know, let's say that you're not the one who needs to just leave any situation, you're just sipping tea, listening to what I'm telling you. But you suspect some folks in your circle, they do need to leave, right? They're off in their mind a little bit they're not thinking so well they're crying or possibly upset they don't know which way to go you know you might be like a drill sergeant just being mean about some things at this point because you're sick of seeing them crying and upset and whatever else but the thing is is that where you're able to help on the back end without them knowing that you're able to help is a good thing That means that um, let's do the whole, I remember one particular person, she put money in the, um, in the, uh, glove compartment. And then when the person finally did make up in their mind that they were going to go somewhere, do something, whatever, they opened up the glove compartment and voila, there was the money. You see, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. Okay. Someone else, um, on the back end, the person who's the victim, right? not ready to leave just yet. They heard the arguing through the window. Police was over there. Okay. No, she didn't want to leave, but Hey, the police will come see you do a wellness check. Um, another situation wasn't quite ready to leave a workplace. So I personally did this. I sent links to a person after I found out everything that they wanted in a job. I sent links 
and conveniently <laughs> those the the job um ended up happening for them you see so you can do some things without everybody knowing matter of fact god don't even want us being that being like that you know oh um did you get did you get what uh you uh, what i sent you <laughs> you see so you know never be offended like if anyone on this channel they give me something never be offended that i don't call you out or anything like that because i learned years ago when i used to do that sort of thing i used to broadcast um, one particular individual was like, uh, uh, not a good idea. Don't want that. And from that point on, I said, you know what? That isn't a good idea because you don't know if people pass audios, videos, and so forth to their family members and friends. And then they see, oh, first and last name of this individual, you know, shows up. That's why some of you all, you use aliases or fake names or what have you, just in case there's a slip up. But, you know, I just totally don't want to do that to anyone. You know, and I and I know what God says about that sort of thing. You know, we, we just need to be real mindful about, you know, putting information, um, specific information out there, you know, when people are in dangerous situations. And some of you all know who those people are. And we're praying right now in the name of Jesus that the healing that someone needs in their mind, body and spirit will take place as they're going through a tur turbulent situation that you will strengthen them in mind, body, and spirit to leave a situation, to not do some things that they've always done to help an abuser. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will just, just protect this person from all harm and danger and let no weapon formed against them prosper as they're making their exit or planning their exit. We pray in Jesus' name that you will remind these individuals, Lord, that they are to trust in you, to trust your process, to safeguard themselves in every way so as not to alarm the abuser as they are leaving their situations. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And God, I love the Lord for this because he can move on us in such a way where before you know it, you are going on about your life you don't have people places and things to be concerned about any longer hallelujah you got the finances hallelujah and you know what it is that you want to do because you have just given it all over to the one true god what he spoke to me about personally was being just more relaxed about various tasks and not be so um you know such a stickler you know um about some things you, because sometimes you can be that way um when you want people out i just want to i just want her out i just want him out of that i just please lord please 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 so speaking of duty calls i thank you as always for taking time out of your schedule to listen you've been listening to youtube in enterprise seven feel free to like subscribe comment we do welcome giving on this channel blessings to you